Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Arnold Clark. It is Wednesday. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme. I'm Peter Martin in the studio with me. We've got Alan Ruff and we've got Tam McManus and Barry Ferguson as well. Only one man thought about Christmas jumpers two days ahead of when we normally wear them. Uh, so that could be the competition for today. Uh, let's see what we're going to talk about. Yeah, big game to look forward to tonight. Uh, one of <clears> us <throat> is in the festive spirit, Tam. It's a fantastic jumper and it lights up as well. <laughs> Three Marks and Spencer's number, Brussels Sprouts on it. I just thought, obviously I'm in now Wednesday, I just thought it's my kind of last day before Christmas, thought I'd wear that and I come in and use it all dressed smartly, so I've had a bit of a nightmare, haven't I? Yeah, and don't forget, as well as Marks and Spencer's, there are other good stores where you can buy <laughs> jumpers. I've uh, just got to keep myself covered here. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're looking forward to a match tonight, which uh, Scott Brown certainly looks forward to. This is, of course, Hearts against Celtic. Despite the fact that Hearts are not at their best, Ruffy, I still think when Rangers and Celtic go through there, I, you know, I sit in the press box and it, the whole place is just uh, ignited. There's, there's something about that stadium. Yeah, the, the Hearts fans love it. They love it when Rangers and Celtic come calling. Uh, actually love it even better if they can beat them but uh, they haven't been doing that and uh, in the evidence of the weekend I think they'll have to wait a wee while longer uh, I thought they were so all over the place at the weekend uh, just didn't look organised at all their confidence all the way through the team was lacking and the goal that they lost was just poor as well I don't know what they were trying to do and uh, if they'll love that tonight, I think they'll they'll get beat. I think two nothing. I don't I think they'll be organised enough to get a two nothing. I don't guys think maybe a hammer, but not for me. Yeah, one win in twelve for Hearts. I mean, Daniel Stendhal has already <clears throat> stated that you know, okay, there are injuries to certain <clears throat> players, but he will definitely need reinforcements. Oh, I think Johnny can't come quick enough uh, for him. You have a look at the squad. He's obviously got a wee period of time, six weeks before the. <clears throat> The window comes on and uh, he'll be looking to try and get some players in, use his contacts, maybe get some from Germany as well. But, you know, I've said it before, I think Hearts, they're probably the worst team, I've, worst Hearts team I've seen <clears> in 20 years. You know, I've not, obviously not, never seen them really in the 80s, but this Hearts team, they're just bereft of anything for me. You know, they've not even got a bit of dig about them. You know, usually you go to Tynecastle and you're in for a hard game physically. Teams are going there and just steamrolling them. So, honestly, I, I think it's a really poor, he's got a massive job, Sendo. I think he's got a huge job. And I think Celtic will go there and hump them tonight. Yeah, um, well, I mean, that in itself is a damning indictment of the team. Gary Mackay, a, you know, a Tyne Castle legend, has already said that, you know, they need to show more, more passion, never mind the ability that everybody's crying out for. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in a bad <coughs> run. Um, again, they were poor at the weekend. I think it's going to, you, you've got to give the new manager a bit of time to come in and get his ideas across to the players. But... They're, it's worrying. It must be worrying for the Hearts fans. I mean, for me, they're definitely in a relegation battle. Um, and I think if Celtic go there and play the way that they can play and they start the game on fire, I think it could be a long, hard night for Hearts. Well, I, I'll be blunt about this. There's no way Hearts are going down for me. I mean, I think uh, he's certainly got a good pedigree, whether he's got enough to turn them into battlers to get the points, Ruffy. Uh, I think, you know, they've got to be better than what they were under Craig Levine because if you're talking about a lack of wins, you know, uh, Hearts fans were crying out for a win at Tyne Castle and he couldn't deliver one for a long time. No, his obviously excuse was he had a lot of injuries, which a lot of managers will say, and you would have to agree that some big players have been out uh, again tonight. The big strikers out, he's suspended. You know, obviously Stevie Nathan, I don't know if he's fit. 
you know, and they just don't have the right players available at the right time, and that's why I think they'll struggle tonight. Yeah, it's, it swings and roundabouts as far as the pressure that gets put on one half <coughs> of the Old Firm or the other, depending on the way the fixtures pan out. But this is a chance, Tam, for Celtic to go five points clear of Rangers and put the pressure on as Rangers get ready to visit the capital on Friday against Hibs. It's a huge game, and Barry will know himself, but in the, the, the nip and tuck title races, you know, if you can get the points on the board, the early doors, and your, your opponent's still to play. You know, psychologically, it's a big boost for you. I think Celtic will go there and win tonight. Rangers have got a tough game, I think, against a rejuvenated Hibs. Under Jack Ross, obviously, Morelos is a big miss. Defoe comes in, but so it's not that, really that big a miss, I think, Defoe's top class as well. But chance to, as you said, five points clear. You know, an old firm game on the horizon. You know, it put real, real pressure on Rangers on Friday. Yeah, and of course, uh, <coughs> as far as the style of Hearts tonight, uh, Scott Brown, the Celtic captain, says he knows exactly what's coming. Yeah, it's, it's going to be different for us. I think they've got a change of manager. They try to play with a, uh, a little bit more shape and a bit high press as well. So it's going to be a different kind of game for us as well. And they've been pressing quite high up the park and putting teams under pressure. Well, putting St Johnson under pressure there. So I think that's what their new manager is looking to do. Well, the Celtic captain loves playing at Tynecastle. He's 16 years, he's been given <coughs> pelters all over the 16 years. And I imagine you'll be in double figures for the years that you've played at Tynecastle. And I, I, that's why I love having you on the show, because when somebody talks about going to a stadium and getting pelters, <laughs> you're, you're the ideal candidate, aren't you? Yep, I, I took a lot of stick at Tynecastle, but I loved it, Peter. It's, it was my favourite away ground to go to. Um, they are right on top of you. I enjoyed every time I went to Tynecastle. Um, Do you block... This is a question that, you know, uh, lots of sports people get asked uh, if they're under intense pressure in a cauldron that Tynecastle undoubtedly is. Are you able to block it out or uh, do you use it at the best times to try and, you know, give you a spur? I, I used it during the warm-up because at the warm-up, the, the Hearts fans were generally in early doors, so we were going out for a warm-up 40 minutes before the game. And then just 10 minutes before, you'd run up close to them, yeah. not too close. <laughs> <laughs> and you could feel them giving you, you dog's abuse and yeah. pelters. But I enjoyed that, that side. I used that in a positive way. And uh, as I says, I loved playing there. I loved it. Yeah, and still that was just a family <laughs> section. <laughs> just as you came out the tunnel to the right-hand side. Uh, of course, uh, as far as a new manager is concerned, I can't believe somebody asked Scott Brown yesterday if Stendhal was under pressure already. I think for the day, they've got to give the manager a bit of time. It's one game into it, so uh, he's putting his own style, his own shape, his own philosophy into the game. So uh, to start <laughs> giving somebody grief after one game's it's a bit harsh. It's a bit harsh, isn't it, Ruffy? One, by the way, the world's gone mad since they sacked. Um, I think it was was it Ronald Koeman after four games at Crystal Palace. It's just crazy now, isn't it? It is crazy, and I, don't, I think the same's going to be with him as it was with the Kilmarnock care manager. If he doesn't hit the ground running, you know, he doesn't get a, a reasonable response for the players and start climbing that league, the, the Hearts fans won't let him away with it because he's not got a, a big enough name. He's not done enough in the game for him to get any leeway. So he really needs to start winning games. I'm, I'm not talking about a month or something. I'm talking five or six months down the road. Yeah. Same as the Kilmarnock guy. But uh, it, Hearts have a standard. They believe that they are the third or fourth or even second to be up there challenging. Uh, and they're nowhere near it. Yeah, it's a long way to go for Hearts. Uh, we'll need to see what team emerges over the forthcoming months and what type of player he, he brings in. Will they be able to play their way out with stylish football or are they going to have to uh, battle? Uh, that's an interesting point on it. I mean, he was famed for apparently a nice brand of mm. football. I wonder if that's going to be good enough. I mean, I've read some papers today and it's just saying Hearts... You're not too good to get down. No, listen, nobody's too good to get down. I think that, obviously, the style, I think he played at Barnsley was high pressing. I think he was the kind of Jurgen Klopp, you know, kind of style of fit players in that front mm. four, going and pressing, uh, defend, defending high up the park, you know, playing the opposition half and really high energy. I don't. I look at the Hearts team just now, I don't think they've got that type of player. And, and the, the Steve McLean's, Naismith's, Christoph Berra, um, Whelan in the middle of the park, I don't think they've got that kind of clientele to go and play that way so I think you've got to just roll the sleeves up and try and get dig out wins um, he's got to get time because as you said Alessio I thought he's very unfortunate to lose his job I think when foreign managers come up to Scotland uh, or, or come over to Scotland 
I don't think they get as, many, as much time as the, as the Scottish guys. Um, I genuinely don't. I think the knives are out for the foreign boys <coughs> quicker uh, than the Scottish guys. Maybe that's just the Scottish <coughs> media, maybe that's just the Scottish fans, but I think he's, uh, he's got to hit the ground running. If Hearts try and play like that tonight, there's only going to be one outcome for me. They'll get thumped. Mm. Um, they've not got the right personnel to go and play a high press. And the high press against Celtic, they'll just count on them every single time. Yep. OK, um, interesting. I'm certainly going to it, looking forward to it. It's got a great atmosphere, regardless of the standard of the side. Hearts always seem to get themselves up for the visit of uh, the two Glasgow Giants. Uh, so, um, <coughs> I'm loath to mention any kind of player that's been linked with clubs, um, Barry, but there's you know, obviously a little snippets here and there saying, oh, Rangers are looking at this player, looking at that player. Do you think even in the back of their mind there is a contingency if... You know the the unbelievable big offer come in for Morelos in January. Do you think? Do you think somebody? Uh, I mean, I know they've been resolute in it, but do you think there's somebody in there saying, "Listen, we better get Plan B in operation here in case it's just too good to turn down"? Because as you know, everybody has a price. Uh, it will <coughs> be in the back of the it would have been discussed, but I can't do it. I yeah. can't, Peter. If they want to try and challenge Celtic and start and try and stay in their coattails, they need to keep them. But I get where you're coming from. If a ridiculous offer comes in for somewhere, they might need to consider it. So I'm sure Stephen Gerrard's got a plan B, but it can't happen. Yeah, and I don't want to ifs, buts and maybes on this and lure you into a trap here with this one, but how important do you think it is, you know, with Rangers, the psychology of it all, you'll be able to tell us better than anyone, but do Rangers absolutely need to win their three games in this, in this run coming up uh, to, to be considered serious title challengers? Because if they, if they didn't win the next three games and Celtic won their four, it could potentially be a, a, you know, an eight-point gap, which is huge. They can't let it go to that. No, they've got, they've, got to, they've got to win the next two games and then go to Celtic Park and, and try and win that game. If not, come away with at least a point. To keep them in it? Yep. If they lost at Celtic Park, would it be? It's going to be hard. It's never over. Yeah, I know it's there's never st over. There's still plenty of games to go, but they need to come away for Celtic Park with something. OK, um, listen, there's one more day to go. Maybe a last gasp <clears> chance <throat> for you to win our uh, competition top. It is, of course, signed Lionel Messi. <laughs> If you'd like to win this unique Lionel Messi signed Barcelona top, subscribe to our YouTube channel PLZ Soccer and we'll announce the winner on Friday 20th of December. Good luck. Uh, there is one person tomorrow that's going to get the mother of all uh, Christmas presents, Ruffy. As soon as we announce that person's name, it could be a boy or a girl, it could be a man or a woman, you know, uncle, aunt. If they have it, it's just going to be the ultimate Christmas present. Yeah, in this present uh, decade, he's the one, you know, and uh, if you get the chance to win something like that, it'd be... A fantastic Christmas present for somebody. Yeah, OK. Uh, the search is undoubtedly well and truly on for uh, a Kilmarnock manager. Uh, there are a few favourites. Let's have a look at uh, the runners and riders because there's some early favourites in there. Gary Holt, 5-2. to two. Alec Dyer is in the box seat because he's going to get a chance over the next two or three games to convince the Kelly board that he's the man uh, to fill the boots of Angelo Alessio. Not really big boots to fill, to be honest with you. And James Fowler's at 10 to 1, Tam. Um, yeah, Gary Holt's obviously, I think, is a massive Commandant fan. I think he's got Commandant tattoo in his leg. He has. I think he's, he's probably the one that the Commandant fans would want. Um, born and bred Kilmarnock uh, fan. I think the, the lad Dyer there, I think he's obviously, got, as you said, in the box seat. I think he's got, he's used to the style of play under Steve Clark. You know, I think maybe Alessio will try to change it and be a little bit more expansive and the players have not took that on board uh, and, and went back to how they wanted to play under Stevie Clark, <coughs> been tight and, and hard to beat. So I think Dyer's got a, got a real opportunity. James Fowler's an interesting one, obviously, coming up from Sunderland, uh, assistant to Jack Ross. I think he's now overseeing everything at Kilmarnock. He's a kind of director of football type in there. So, uh, three, three good names. I think the fans' choice would be 
would be um, Gary Holt. Yeah. Uh, interesting on that one, um, Gary Holt. They pay a particular mm. brand of football at Livingston. I don't know. I wonder if I wonder if the Kelly fans would buy into that, considering what they had with Steve Clark. I just think it's the players that you've got, Peter. I think at Livingston, that's the players he has, you know, and he, he uses it to their strength on that park. I think uh, the players that he's got at Kilmarnock might technically be a wee bit better, so they might be able to play that style, yeah. you know. So we'll just have to wait and see. But I think the boy Dyer went and got a tattoo today. Uh, are the commandment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, Tom, have you, have you got a tattoo of any of your former clubs? Maybe a Boston United tattoo of no, Derry City? I'd have uh, end up with a sleeve, a full body sleeve of all my clubs. Yeah, you, you don't have any tattoos, do you? No, I don't, know. no. Ruffy? No. None at all, no. None at all. You love it, by the way. You loved it. When, when was your first tattoo? What age were you? I think it was um, 18, 19. Yeah, yeah. It's a big, you're a big fanatic of that, aren't you? Along with Beckham at the time. They were, <laughs> who was your inspiration between getting a tattoo? I just like tattoos. Yeah. Okay, don't yeah. get up. But do you look at him? <laughs> yeah. You can always tell when I ask him a question, he's not happy. I mean, he's I, I can tell you who the worst tattoo I've ever seen in my life Go Gary O'Connor. Went to Tenerife when he was 18 I, I know and got a Armani, Armani tattoo on his arm. Is that it was right? like the smallest Armani tattoo <laughs> and it wasn't even the right eagle. It was, a, it was, a, it was like Gamblers Anonymous. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that because, shocker. would you believe, in the next month I'm working with him, so I cannot wait to tell him to get his tattoo. I think he's covered it up. It was yeah. an absolute shock. Absolutely. Would you want me to mention it to him and Riordan? Can you believe I'm on a night out with them? <laughs> I mean, it's just going to be absolute. I, I cannot wait. Uh, the Some banter. boy Gary O'Connor. Oh, right. the story should I tell be you what, he is, he, I liked him. Yeah, he was, good, he was a decent player. Yeah, did you I like him? You're talking obviously about Scotland. No, I was at Birmingham. Then. Of course, yeah, yeah. I was at Birmingham. Yeah. Yep. If anything, was there anything that I know we digress here, but I've got to ask you: was there anything that sometimes there's just a missing link? You know, to, he, he, I mean, he got a great move to Moscow. You know, made a lot of money. Yeah, if it honest me, he done, he done well at Birmingham. Yeah, he did. He done well. Um, then he lost his way a wee bit, which is never nice to see. No, exactly. But do you know what? He, he did have good quality. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, OK, interesting stuff. Nice little compliment for Gary from uh, Barry Ferguson. Um, so, interestingly enough, we had a poll on our uh, Twitter uh, regarding the uh, Kilmarnock boss, and it looks as just backs up what uh, Tam was <coughs> saying there, Ruffy. Gary Holt out in front. Uh, if Alec Dyer gets it, we did actually pose uh, the question uh, to... Uh, a number of people yesterday, Ruffy, about, you know, number twos becoming yeah, number yeah. ones. Somebody mentioned somebody to me last night that was the ultimate number two who went on to become a number one and with a lot of success. And be Mourinho. Uh, well, <laughs> there's another one. Oh, Walter Smith. <laughs> Walter, Walter Smith. I was thinking more closer to home. Um, but, Ruffy, you've come up with uh, Mourinho. Yeah. <laughs> he was a translator. Was he, not? he was in the number he two. He was a translator. Was, yeah. and then, but not a, bad, not a bad man to be a translator for in uh, Sir Bobby Robson. Um, um, as far as, uh, just before we finish off here, guys, um, Aberdeen looking to extend John Gallagher's uh, uh, loan period as well. So, clearly, I'm wondering about Aberdeen and how much money they will be throwing at things because there's still that dilemma of, OK, you've got the training ground, you've got phase one, phase two is hopefully enough money to get Kingsford, the stadium, up and running. Peter, it's an interesting one because they've obviously got the link-up now with Atlanta United and that's where they got the boy Gallagher from. You know, I played in America, I played in the MLS and I played in the league below. I always thought there were some great players over there. But obviously, they've got to have a European passport. You know, they can't, it's very difficult to get a work permit for Americans yeah. if they're not in the international setup. Yeah. But I played with some top players over there who I thought, maybe he would do a job for, for Hibs <clears> or Hearts or Falk at a lower level. So I think there is some gems out there uh, for Aberdeen. They're, they're tapping into it with Atlanta United. So I think that'll be a very, very good link up uh, with Aberdeen and Atlanta because. Atlanta United have got a very good side. I think they won the MLS last year. Frank DeBoer is now the manager. Yeah. Is it Frank? I think it, I think it is Frank. Um, and they've got a great setup. So that'll be good to get some boys over there with the European passports into, into Petodre because the boy Gallagher. Uh, has been excellent for them. Yeah, by hook or by crook, that's what they need to do. I mean, we, we talked about it earlier in the season, Barry. Get scouts, do what <clears> Fergie <throat> did, get scouts and get down to the west of Scotland and convince players that you'll get a chance to play up at Aberdeen. And as, as Tam mentioned there as well, if you can get a link up with another club as a feeder to you, all the better. No, I agree with you. And now they've got the training ground. 
and that, that's a great opportunity if they, they show them what the plans are up there. I mean, I've seen pictures on, on the TV. It looks as if it's a, a top training base um, and hopefully, I'm sure Dell will have scouts all over Scotland trying to entice the young boys up there. OK, um, last point, uh, Barry. Uh, quite simply, Mikel Arteta uh, set to become the Arsenal manager. Um, I mean, you, you know him as a player. Yeah, but it's one of the ones. He was, he was young. You'd never imagine Mikel being a... Um, a manager or a coach, but listen, he's Pep Guardiola and man takes him on board. Who better to learn off than, than him? For me, he's the best manager about. So great to see ex teammates doing really well. Yep, uh, fingers crossed that he has uh, some success at Arsenal. Well, that's just about it. Uh, if uh, you are going to have a good Christmas, Tam, we certainly hope you're going to be wearing festive jumpers like that. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, just before we go, I might as well show everybody the head-to-head -head because, Barry, as you know, it's, it's I was in New York, so I didn't get a chance to show you. Ruffy is my nearest challenger. It looks as if you've dropped off. Now, I know mathematically it's not impossible <coughs> for you to make a run, but it, do you still have the bit between your teeth that you think you can make a run? I've got other things that I need to concentrate on. Um. OK, well, man, that's <laughs> sun, Sunday's Christmas party, to be honest with you. That's what's yep. on his, that's what's on his mind. Joke. He was nearly pulling out of it through sickness. But oh, I'll be there. Oh, worry. I know you'll be there. Don't worry about that, son. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks to everyone for contributing uh, on uh, a daily basis. You can do it on Twitter. You can join us on Facebook Live Monday to Friday. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Ever-Growing Football Family. The figures just keep going up and up. Thank you to each and every one of you for joining us for that. Tell your mates, share, like follow uh, and we will be bigger and better uh, as we move on into 2020 as well. Uh, so with that in mind, join us on Friday uh, as well for that Lino Messi top. Gary Harkins is going to be on our podcast tomorrow. Really looking forward to that. Uh, and the last point I'm going to make is thanks to Ruffy, Tam and to Barry Ferguson. Don't forget, right after this programme, you're going to get a chance to see some great deals on new and used cars from Arnold Clark. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to the latest offers from Arnold Clark. If Italian street chic is your thing, then this Fiat 500 1.2 lounge model can be yours for 9998 or £159 a month. It comes in a variety of colours with 15-inch alloy wheels, leather steering wheel and Apple CarPlay. A surefire way to get noticed around town. Not to be outdone, this five-door 19-plate Toyota Igo X-Play is currently 10998 or £179 per month and includes a 7-inch touchscreen, rear-view camera and boasts an impressive 67.3 miles per gallon, perfect for city driving. And finally, we have the distinctive style of the Peugeot 208. This 1.2 Tech Edition comes with 3D connected navigation, park assist and 16-inch alloy wheels, all for £11,998 or £189 a month. And how about this for an early Christmas present? Until the 16th of December, if you buy any used or delivery mileage car from over 25,000 used car deals, we'll give you £300 off. For more details on this or any of the other fantastic deals available from Arnold Clark, simply visit arnoldclark.com or click on the link below. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy motoring. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.